Hello, hello, and welcome to Catalyst MLM. I'm Brian Switchko, and today on the show we have David Hutcherson. David has been uh, a part of World Ventures. He has been in the network marketing industry for a few years now and started recently a blog called The Power of Part-Time. Um, has an awesome mindset and an awesome way of going about giving people value to bring in business that, honestly, um, you would never really know about unless you asked. But uh, thanks so much for being on the show, David. No problem. Thanks for having me. So so I'll get into that a little bit later in terms of uh, giving value first. But... <laughs> My, my question to you, because I, I heard a little bit of your story and was curious more about the beginning, is where did your entrepreneurial journey begin? Uh, began at a very, very early age. <laughs> I like to tell everybody I would have been a billionaire if it was for my parents supporting my dream. Uh, no, actually, I remember I was younger, probably about two or three. Uh, I told my mom, hey, when I grow up, I'm going to sell water. And she laughed at my face and said, hey, you know what? No one's going to buy water because water's free. And then, then we have things like this. <laughs> It's a billion dollar industry, so yeah. who knows where I could have been right now. Uh, but no, I, yeah, I've always stole anything and everything that I can touch from candy, chips, pops in the fifth grade to keychains in the fifth grade to DVDs to tutoring services. Like I've always, I played business, so I made my own money and carried it around a little plastic suitcase. Like I've just always had the, the bug in me. I, I even started I my own photocopied dollar company. bills too. Oh, see, <laughs> I I'm didn't... not the only one. It's, it's just something I wanted to do. So, yeah. yeah, I've always had the bug since I was younger. Uh, so I really don't know where it came from. I think it's kind of something that's just put in me. Yeah. And did you did you know back then that you were an entrepreneur? Or did you know you're able to look back now and say, oh, oh, that's what that's how I knew that I was an entrepreneur. And I could look at a little kid and say, oh, you know, they're definitely gonna be an entrepreneur. But, you know, a lot of times you can't see it unless you're looking back on it. Yeah, I really I don't even think I knew what entrepreneur meant back then. I just knew I liked to make money and do it in a business format. Yeah. And yeah, it was just more natural. I had no idea that's what it was called or what I was going to do. So what was your uh, your first and air quotes big success as you were, you know, doing all these little ventures when you were younger? All right. Uh first big success was a candy store. So I loved selling chips and and candy and everything like that. So it was pretty cool. I made a lot of money. A lot of my friends would come and you know, get some something in the summertime, <laughs> but <laughs> I had to end that pretty soon. Once I got uh, some some un uh, some not very nice characters coming to my house very early in the morning seeking juice, and so my parents <laughs> shut that down really quickly. Like, yeah, you have someone here on drugs who wants to buy some pop, so let's not do that anymore. <laughs> so that was kind of my first big venture. That is that is a good lesson to learn. <laughs> yeah, it was. So uh, you you brand yourself quite often as the the five to nine warrior and um, kind of a play on the nine to five warriors you know working a job nine to five every day and you say that you're a five to nine warrior and you know back to the name of your your blog which is the power of part time you know tell me tell me a little bit about the the verbiage behind that and why you chose those terms. Well, actually, uh, I'm in network marketing, so I love the industry. This is the industry that really gave my spark back. Because uh, I think one thing that happens is that a lot of people have their big dreams, but once you uh, get out of school and bills come, reality usually starts to set in, and so your dream starts to shrink and shrink and shrink and shrink. And I forgot all about this entrepreneurial spirit, but luckily a friend of mine did like a lot of people and said, hey, I got something you have to see. Uh, I took a look at it, and it really opened my mind back up to not only business, but also personal development. And then diving into personal development, I really got enamored and loved with uh, Jim Rohn. And he actually has a series that a lot of people in network marketing, if you haven't listened to it, uh, please check it out. I know Brian probably put the link below yep. uh, for the, uh, the magic of part time with Jim Rome. And he dives really into this idea of how he was able to build his business while working a full time job. And I just love that concept that I kind of took a play on the words and came with the power of part time. That's awesome. And and so many people often say, you know, well, I don't have time to build a network marketing business or I don't have time to build a business. And, you know, I know that Jim Rohn talks about it and actually pretty much everyone who's ever been successful at any kind of network marketing business talks about it right. is, um, you know, eliminating all the noise from your life and then magically you have this extra time. And if you commit that extra time somewhere to building, a, a for example, to building a network marketing business, then you can work your way out of the job that you hate. Right. And so, you know, what would you say to someone that doesn't quite grasp that yet, doesn't quite grasp that investment of their time? 
you're, they're totally missing it um, because one of uh, one of my favorite mentors, Mr. Ray Higdon, said, hey, if you can't build it part time, you can't build it full time. And that's one of the things that they think like, hey, if I had so much time, I would be an investor. But the real thing is, if you had time, you're probably just wasted anyway. Mm-hmm. What are you willing to give up to get your dreams? What are you willing to do to get your freedom? And that's the one thing a lot of people got to realize. It doesn't take a lot to build a network marketing business or to build any type of business. Mm-hmm. The really thing that it takes is a lot of commitment and dedication yeah. and consistency. 30 minutes a day will blow up any type of business and you'll outshine a lot of people because most people will only do it once or twice every two months yeah. or once or twice a week. So if you could take little smart action, I mean, I love to tell people, if you just start, I don't care what you do. Um, I'm a very analytical person, so I can understand a lot of people say, hey, I want to think about this. I want to make sure I have the time. I want to make all the lights align. Like, it's never going to happen that way. That's like, I want to go from, I'm in Chicago, I want to go to Detroit, but I'm not going to leave the house until all the lights turn to green. That, it doesn't make sense. Yeah. So you have to get on the journey, you have to start, and then as you progress, things will open up and you'll gain so much more than you probably would ever realize. Yeah, absolutely. And and so you, I mean, I saw an article on your blog, and I know that you focus on, on online marketing. So you, you know, you, you give value on your blog. You also have an interview show. And, um, you know, like this series, you interview really awesome leaders. And uh, I was actually watching a few of your videos this morning. And you, you give that value away for free. And, and there's, it was actually kind of funny. I had to go into your HTML code to find a link to your World Ventures site. Um, I, I legitimately couldn't find it. And, uh, you know, it's, it's powerful that you, you actively prevent people from, from buying. You know, you, not only do you not sell, but you actively prevent them from buying because you want to give value and build a relationship first. So what, what have you seen from that? You know, what kind of results have you seen? And this goes back to Jim Rohn and personal development. He said your value that you put in the world will exactly dictate your value that you receive in most people's income. And, and a lot of people actually look at me and give me a little flack for building a website and going to an interview show. And they're like, hey, that's not duplicatable. And the one thing I tell people is like, no, it's not duplicatable, but I want my team to build value. That is. Yeah. You could build value in so many different ways. You could be a tutor. You could be yeah. in an a organization where you give back. You can just help people. Whatever you're being helpful, that's how you can get value. And if you get value, then you receive value in return. So it's been pretty awesome because a lot of people don't like to be sold. They love to buy, but they don't like to be sold. So if you get to show that you have a person of influence and you're a person of value, uh, people really respect it and they resonate with it. That's, that's amazing. And so, you know, wrapping back is that you said, you know, 30 minutes a day and not, you know, not everybody's going to blog and not everybody's going to have an interview show. But, you know, it really, it, it doesn't matter what people do as long as they do it consistently. So ha- what have you, you know, recommended to your business partners in your business um, when they don't want, they're not technologically savvy and they don't want to go in that direction? What have you recommended to do consistently? Yeah, one thing I say is either you got to get up or go to bed later. Uh, get up early or go to bed later. Uh, it's, it's really that simple. And then reach out, mm-hmm. extend ask people what do they need help with because um, <laughs> one thing I do not like that most people do typically, especially in network marketing, and this is really any time of business, get on social media from Twitter to Facebook to Instagram. It's a lot of people yelling. Mm-hmm. Look at me. If you want to change your life, inbox me. If you want to save money and make look lose weight and look great and live forever, yep. you know, find out how. My thing is a lot of people are yelling. Why don't you just ask people what they have going on in their life. Ask mm-hmm. questions. See if they can be helpful. You see someone's having a hard day. Why don't you just say something to make them feel better? Again, just constantly reach out to people because I let people know, yes, I do have an online show and it might help me with my uh, my network marketing business, right. but I still go just old school. You just have to connect with people. Mm-hmm. Very few people are looking for opportunities that they don't even know that it exists. Mm-hmm. So you have to make them aware of it by being a person of value. And that's just asking simple questions and how can you help them? Yeah. And so when you, you know, you talk about giving value other than your interview show and actually um, we were, we were doing what we both do to each other, like right before the interview, um, right. you know, you, you have tools that you love to recommend and I have tools that I love to recommend and books and, and trainers and great articles and so on and so forth. How do you balance the bringing in new tools into your kind of repertoire of things that you're like, hey, you should check this out versus actually getting it out there? Uh, the one thing I say is eliminate them. Uh, 
in the beginning, I got like really network marketing, affiliate marketing, like most people do. Uh, so I dived online. I was like, hey, I want more leads, more leads, more leads. So I ended up diving into like two or three different programs. I was listening to everybody's uh, audio book and training it on how you can be successful in the business. And what it really did is just distract you. Yeah. Honestly, most things on the internet or someone who's very successful, all you have to do is follow them and it will work. The problem when it will not work is when you try to follow eight different people yep. in a direction. So what I did is I was eliminating all of those you know, distractions and it's really just picking one strategy mm -hmm. and making it work. Yeah. Once it works, you can then add something on there, uh, like you know, network marketing in regards to getting on it online or to doing an internet show or anything like that or building funnels online, but just get good at one skill and master it. Just focus on that until you get it, and then you can expand, uh, expand from there. Yeah, and that's, I mean, um, it, it sounds like, uh, you know, if you get, uh, I forget, back in the olden days when they're trying to <laughs> trying to execute someone, they'd uh, have, a, have a bunch of horses, and they'd tie ropes off to their limbs and have all the horses run in different directions, and, like, that's, you know, you have all these powerful leaders, and they're all, you know, going their own direction, and you're trying to listen to all of them, and, and you're, you're putting yourself in that situation. Versus if you just jump on the back of the horse, you're going to go somewhere. Um, exactly. exactly. Not necessarily too glue factory. But um, <laughs> sorry, that's a someone. very graphic but really good example of what happens. I love that. I'm talking to someone from in Kentucky now. the other day, so uh, horses were in, in the brain. Gotcha. But um, yeah, so it's, uh, it's definitely powerful. And I mean, you know, I've had the experience, but you know, what, what's a good example of something where, you know, you've reached out to someone where you're giving value with no intention of it returning from that person or of it returning at all, and you were surprised by what did come from it? Um, I can say it happens all the time. It was where it just, especially with the show now, because it's fairly new, it just got started, and that are people, I, I talk about all form of entrepreneurship. I don't even necessarily focus on network marketing. So I have people from the show that do uh, Facebook advertising, that did social and digital marketing consulting, that did uh, e-commerce stores, that owned um, all type of facets of, of facets of business. So what I do is I just get value on people who are interested in building businesses in general. And then, of course, a couple of people have asked me what I'm doing, but that's the surprise of it is that people, to me, it still amazes me that over the world, people are listening to the show and gaining value. Like I had somebody uh, email me the other day and says, this is great. This is really helping me in regards to building my business. And they have no interest in it whatsoever in network marketing, but it just yeah. feels good to know that I'm helping them uh, see that there is a better way. Yeah. And there's a better way, a lot of different paths, there's a different ways to get there. But as long as someone's doing something to kind of add value to their life, I think it's a big thing that really resonates with me. Yeah, and I'm I'm probably gonna get an email for saying that or for saying this, but uh, my transcriptionist, <laughs> uh, she she trans she watches all the videos and she transcribes and you know probably like every other video I get an email like you know this is so awesome I love this person and every single time it tickles me because you know like you know I'm hiring her to do transcriptions but at the same time she's watching the videos and she's getting value from it so I'm like all right this is like why I you know why I do what I do because it's it's that I don't know it's a glow and it's like you you don't necessarily and I, I know that there's some people that think that you do but you don't necessarily need to think that you're going to get value from somewhere when you're giving it you just do it and it and it you know you you uh you reap what you sow right yeah and so and that's what I was going to say yes yeah, yeah. real it's real you never plan for it uh it's like when you plant seeds it's, and it goes back kind of to the magic of a uh, power magic of part time with Jim Rohn yeah. is that he was like you plant seeds you don't know where they're going to fall some are going to fall on great soil but some are going to fall on land some are going to get picked off by birds and that's the same thing with this but you do know if you plant some seeds something's going to happen mm -hmm. I don't know what seeds are going to plant and turn into a you know fruit or fruitful harvest I wish okay. something will and I hope something will but I don't know which one it will so I just have to keep going through the motions and just keep providing value and value mm -hmm. and really in return I'm getting some type of value from it I mean mm -hmm. Uh, most people love to give, but it's a very selfish thing to give because yeah. it's actually about the feeling that you receive after you do it. I feel great when I help someone, yep. so that's why I do it. So why not do something that's selfish but very beneficial to others, right. and that's in providing right. value. So a, a lot of the leaders in, in multiple marketing and you know just people who are doing well and growing their business, 
they talk about giving value all the time and a lot of they do all the time i mean you know ray higdon puts out videos that anyone can watch and they're phenomenal um and actually we're having him on later which is exciting um (laughs) but so uh you know what would you say to someone who's just getting started and they're not really too sure about this whole you know give value and get value thing what would be that first step uh just start just pick anything and start there the one thing i say is how you do anything is how you do everything so it could be as little as just saying good morning to everybody you see. Mm-hmm. Say hello. Because a lot the biggest thing that a lot of people have an uh, issue with, and I'm not going to act like I'm not anything special. I put my hand up to as well. It's the phone, the 20,000-pound phone. Yeah, It's hard to say, hey, I have something I want you to take a look at. And some people have a problem just with talking to their friends. So why not just talk to strangers and say hello? Yeah. It's how you get used to the process of, of you know engaging in conversation and just being a value. You could do a little thing and say, hey, how was your day today? Call somebody you haven't talked to in 30 days, a year, a month, and just say hello. Don't even try to pitch them. Just say hello. How is your life? Because you'll never know how much value you can really install in someone with a simple conversation. Because a lot of people go through the day, and they don't even have the opportunity to think about themselves, let alone think about the good things that are going on in life and see that, hey, someone really cares about me. So if you could do something as little just conversations with friends and families and coworkers and strangers, it just giving value in that aspect and then from there you start hearing things constantly um like hey i'm having problems with this hey i wish this was yeah. happening hey i wish this was going on and in the act of listening you will actually find ways to grow and start giving more value yeah. into the marketplace and and a lot of people often mistake the term value for you know well i need to be knowledgeable on this topic or i need to have you know these tools but you're right it's it's about energy too and just you know brightening someone's day and actually i i didn't really connect the two until you just said that but um, I, I run several times a week and uh, I always go at the same time. And it's funny because I'll see the same people running, you know, we'll cross at the same places. And, um, you know, I'll like, I'll high five people, like complete <laughs> strangers that I don't know their name. I've never talked to them. We're always going in opposite directions, but we always hit each other at the exact same spot. And um, I'll just be like, nice job. And, and just keep running. And I have my headphones oh. in and they have their headphones in. So, you know, but it's still even though I, I even though I'm the one initiating it I still leave with a smile and um, yeah it's definitely it's definitely powerful to give that energy to people um, in any way possible so and and as you said before um, volunteering too because even if you volunteer somewhere people are gonna start asking about you you know how do you have the time to volunteer whatever it may be um, right you know that leads to business and it doesn't need to but it does quite often yeah and Harvey McKay said the best. He's one of the greatest connectors, I believe, on this world. Um, he's like, the type of people that are in volunteering situations are ideally the type of people you want in network marketing. That means they essentially care about a greater cause and giving back, and they're willing to work for it for free even <laughs> and give their time just to see a cause expand. So yeah. that's a, there's not a better place to go to meet some great individuals who's willing to do a lot that could potentially, again, this is the plant and seeds. You don't know what seeds are going to grow, but that can potentially be beneficial for your business. But again, just give that value and the conversations will occur and you'll find ways to help and possibly yeah. introduce them to your business. Yeah. And, and it's um, for anyone who's been in network marketing for any period of time, um, you know that, you know, you'd be like, oh, this person's going to be a rock star and they'll do nothing. And be like, oh, this oh, yeah. person, this person, I don't know if they're, I don't think they're going to do anything. They're really quiet and introverted and then they'll be a rock star. And you're constantly surprised. It really doesn't matter how good you are reading people. You will constantly be surprised. But um, you said it before a little, you said the term connector. So, you know, explain that in your terms and um you know kind of what what you do to to work towards that i guess yeah um i'm great i'm really grateful for what's happening with the site i mean it's getting a great response from a lot of people it's not that it's nothing crazy going on but it's just a tight knit of group of people that are are really resonating with it and with the site i've been able to even connect people with different resources people that are looking for uh hey i want to look for this type of person in this type of industry hey i know that person i could connect you to them because the more people you meet the more stories you know, and all you have to do is connect the dots. Yeah. You know, if someone's looking for a great insurance agency, you know, you can connect and some of your good friend who's in insurance because you know them. Or vice versa, hey, I don't need somebody to do a website for me. Well, I got somebody I could connect you with. Again, that's a for- another form of giving value because you're solving problems. That's what really matters. If you could solve someone's problems, you become a person of value in their eye. And then when you become a person of value, then you become a person of influence. 
and it becomes a little bit easier for you to uh, mention some things or get them to look at you seriously in regards to certain aspects of your business. Yeah, like, well, like one of the biggest things that a lot of people say is that in network marketing, it's all about you, really. That really determines the success you're going to achieve. It doesn't matter what you're selling. Pills, potions, mm-hmm. travel, lotions, girdles. It doesn't really matter what, what you're selling. She said because girdles? If, yes, I said girdles. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but like if, if, if uh, let's say, Warren Buffett picked up my phone and went through my contacts list and said, hey, Albert Anderson, mm-hmm. I got this new business. It costs $700,000. Would you want to get started? Well, network marketing usually doesn't cost $700,000, yeah. but let's say $500. Will they get started? Yes. Now, if I call that person when they get started, probably not because I don't have a much value in the world. I'm not a person of influence. you know. So if you could give more value, you become a person of influence, and then people will listen to you, essentially. Mm-hmm. And it becomes an easier task, and it just eliminates some of it. Of course, it would never become perfect, but it makes it a little bit easier. Yeah, and you spoke about it a little bit earlier, but you know, mindset and having that. Because so many people... You know, oh, I'm gonna. I, I I heard this video, and I'm gonna go out into the world, and I'm gonna I'm gonna try what this you know this this David guy says, and I'm gonna go and try and and give value, and it may not be well received, or maybe they feel like it's draining, but you know, a lot of it is just kind of finding where to do it. So it is about you have to make it about you, and you have to you know perfect your mindset so that you are able to do that because it's not easy. But you know, how do you do that? How do you uh, keep your mindset positive and and keep you know building that energy inside you so you can put it out there. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a big fan of uh, quotes. So I'm going to throw a, co- a couple at them. Zig Ziglar said it best. Uh, uh, motivation is just like taking a bath. It's best when done daily. So <laughs> it's something to that nature. Uh, so I, di- I mean, I spend countless hours and dollars on developing me uh, in the morning and at evening. I have a long drive to my job, my uh, nine to five. So I actually, I don't listen to the radio. All I have is podcasts and different type of audio that's bettering me as a person because that's what it's really all about. Mm -hmm. A lot of people look at network marketing for the financial opportunities, but it's really about becoming a better person and having a better life. Uh, Money doesn't solve all your problems, but it does help with some of them. But if you could feel good about what you're doing, and that goes back to also beginning with the end in mind. I know where I'm going with this company, with this organization, and more importantly, I know the lives that I have to affect Mm -hmm. and I'm going to affect that I'm willing to go through the crap now that I have to go through because I have the bigger vision. So mm-hmm. I really invest, uh, I suggest a lot of people for action items. Dive into, like everybody says, 10 minutes, or just 10 minutes of audio every single day. Mm-hmm. 10 pages of a good book every single day. That will do so much in for your mindset. And then also have a bigger vision. Like everybody say, know your why. Make your, get your why that makes you cry. <laughs> and that would have you something that's worth fighting for because like how much is your freedom worth? Yep. Yeah, and that's um, there's there's two really good podcasts that people could listen to in the car. I think it's the uh, the power of part time and Catalyst MLM. Um, I think I've heard of those two. <laughs> so so Tony Robbins, um, I think had a really interesting acronym for it. It was called Net Time. It was no extra time time, and you know in the car as you're making dinner, uh, you know. Heck, even when you're in the shower, is it so many people, you know, I don't have any extra time. Well, okay, the first thing that you can eliminate is TV. And if, oh, if yeah. you eliminate TV, you have a plethora of extra time. Um, but some people, you know, to them, that's I have to have my soap operas or whatever it may be. Um, you know, you're right. Like, you know, in the car or, you know, while you're in the shower and setting your phone on a podcast on the counter um, or in a coffee cup, as Pinterest describes. But uh, <laughs> empty coffee cup. Um, you know, so... So it's uh, it's not easy. You know, it is easy to, to sit back and watch TV and get that dopamine fix. But, you know, it is difficult work, but you have that laser focus on the vision and you know how that's going to get you there. So, you know, what would be your I guess what would be your process in terms of, you know, do you go out and find the podcast first or do you set your why first? What do you do when you bring someone into your team and help them have that process? Yeah, it's basically about them first. So you have to determine why you're doing this. Mm-hmm. And it, like I said, it has to be bigger than typical dollars and cents because yeah. there's a lot of ways to make money. So why are you willing to go through network marketing to get the money? Because it's a very simple business, but it's not that easy to do in the long run. You have to talk to a lot of people. You have to deal with a lot of different personalities. People are going to look at you strange, yeah. but I'm glad they do because it's, that means there's a lot of opportunity because if it was easy, it wouldn't be worth it. Yeah. Um, so versus is really focusing on what they want to accomplish out of life, essentially. What do you want to do? Like, yeah, you want to get more money, but why? Yeah. Uh, because I can quit my job. Why? So I can be home for my family. Oh, why? 
because I want to see my son grow up and I don't want to just miss every game he goes to. That's why you want to do the business. You really have to dive deep. It's kind of like the, uh, someone, one of my leaders taught me the five why strategy. You have a reason why you want to do it, then ask why. And do it five times and then you'll get to the core of the, the solution. It's just like if you go to the doctor and you say, I'm sneezing, that's not a problem. That's just a symptom. Mm -hmm. The yeah. problem is you might have allergies or something like that. So that's what you need to really focus on. So the same thing in the business is that you might have some symptom, something on the surface that might look like there's a problem. But that's not the problem. It's just an indication of a bigger problem. So yeah. find that bigger problem. And then just ask for any type of information. I mean, there's so much information out there in the world that really you could find something or some value. Just ask any leader of any company in any arena, who should I listen to? And they'll point you in a good direction. Yeah. And that's, I mean, um, the, uh, the, the why strategy is awesome because so many, so many people say, you know, well, I want to earn some extra money or I want to, you know, whatever it may be. And, you know, needing extra money is, is a, it's a symptom because so often people say, well, I want to make six figures. Well, why? And, you know, a lot of people don't realize, they don't think about that when your income goes up, so do your expenses. It's often directly related. Right. And, and a lot of people are just, you know, I, I wish I could not work and travel around the world. And I know a, a large community of people who do just that on something like twenty or thirty thousand dollars a year. And they make twenty or thirty thousand dollars a year by doing that. And you know people don't take a moment to think about that dream that they kind of have always considered and see how it's possible, network marketing or otherwise. Right. So, you know, we talked about mindset and we talked, you, you mentioned several um, trainers, but you also mentioned several people that you work with. And I think you mentioned a mentor. Um, you know, one of the things that's often kind of overlooked is, is allies and creating, creating allies that you can work with, not necessarily, you know, be mentored by or, you know, help to mentor, but people who are on your same level, not even in your same company. Um, how, how do you go about finding those and building those relationships? Yeah, I have to surround myself with the thinking that outthinks me because I would screw it up. Like that's what most people do. If you try to go into any type of business or any type of endeavor by yourself yeah. with your own ideas, you would ruin it. Like Einstein said, if your uh, thinking got you into the problems, you can't think yourself out of it with just exact yeah. same thinking, exact same mindset. So I just, I mean, people are really receptive into giving if you just reach out to them and then take action. So if you find someone of value that you really want to be around, mm -hmm. just connect with them. Say hello. Can I take you to lunch? Can I have coffee with you? Just to hang out and to be in their environment. And then again, go back to value. How mm -hmm. can I help you? See, is there a way? Because there might be something that you're great in that they're not, that you might be able to do that, which is normal and come second nature. Again, right. exchange of value. Then they can help you because you really have to just find people that have what you want mm -hmm. and then mirror them. This is one of the only, <laughs> in school, it's kind of weird. They teach you to, if you, if you copy, mm -hmm. it's cheating and you <laughs> fail. Yeah. And network marketing and entrepreneurship in general, yeah. that's exactly how you get successful. Find yeah. someone who's doing what you want, copy them, sit down and pick their brain, and then actually do what they say, and you'll be amazed how a greater relationship you can build. Yeah. And yeah. then even if it's not a mentor, but go and cross line and just find somebody you can work with. It's just accountability partners, just like going to the gym. Yeah, it's so much easier to work out when you have someone who's there to help you and push you because you don't want to let them down along with letting yourself down at the same time. Yeah, and a lot of times, you know, having having someone to go to the gym with is a lot more powerful than hiring a trainer. Because, you know, a trainer, you can say, well, I'm hiring you, so I'm going to stop paying you, and I don't need you anymore. Right. Um, but an accountability partner, you're both there for the same goal. And and you hit it on the head with um, with mirroring. And, you know, a lot of, um, actually most successful entrepreneurs in any industry, they say, you know, I, I want to they want to help people do what they've done in some way, shape, or form. And actually, uh, uh, was it Jim? Uh, I'm sorry, uh, Robert Kiyosaki and Donald Trump um, have a really awesome book called Why We Want You to Be Rich. And it's, it's a phenomenal example of how leaders really do want people to climb up because they know that not everybody's going to take the initiative. But for those who are on that cusp of like, you know, if they just need a kick in the pants to do that, right. they want to do it. And, and the same in terms of mirroring, it goes for mindset and energy. If you, if you exude positivity, people are going to want to mirror that positivity and also be positive. If you exude negativity, the same is also true. So, you know, people attract that. So it is important. You're right. And um, that's, that's amazing advice in terms of uh, attracting those allies. So, you know, who, um, what type of allies do you, do you look for and do you have in terms of, you know, what industry they're in or their experience? 
Yeah, that's. I, I really don't know what industry that I'm looking for. Mm-hmm. It's really all about people in general. This the vibe they give off because there could be two type of people in the exact same industry with the exact same experience. But I just vibe better with a certain type of person. You mm-hmm. you really just gotta kind of go with the flow in that case and be just really like hippie and it's like, hey, love, cool. I feel the <laughs> energy. You know, yeah. come on, let's be friends. Let's unite. Uh, it's just really about like if you have certain, especially if you focus short term and long term, mm-hmm. like if someone is like just a little bit ahead of you, I think it's pretty good to hang out with them because it's not so far fetched. You could they could really kind of resonate with where you're at. Then also keep begin with the end in mind. Again, you can see somebody's really far down, like 10 down, two years ahead of you, essentially where you want to be. And then you could just hang out with them. So it's kind of you want to mix up where people that are a little bit ahead of you as well as someone who's way ahead of you in regards to experience or basically where you want to be in life. And then you just kind of connect with them if they fit. You know, if you vibe with them, they got something you want, it's good energy, then reach out to them and connect. Absolutely. And and that's, um, you know, it's, it's funny because people do it to me now and, and I'm still, you know, in the phase where I'm like confused by it. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, someone who's, let's let's say in the metaphor, you know, two years behind me and they're, they're you know, contacting me. Whereas I'm contacting people who are two years ahead of me and I like complete, you completely forget that you have that experience. And, you know, it took me the longest time to be like, I, I actually know something like, and I, it, it, I, and I kind of like got nostalgic being like, you know, I remember when I was doing that, you know, like I can help you. Right. So it's, um, yeah, I mean, I think that, uh, I guess identifying those little things that kind of make you smile. And just as you did, as soon as you started talking about that, you know, big smile across your face, you're like, right. go with the energy. <laughs> So, uh, you know, and, and let's, let's even dive into that a few, a few more seconds. Like a lot of people, yeah. when they say, hey, I don't know enough to give value or to be uh, a person of value. Because I know I dealt with that personally. It took me. A, <laughs> I came with the idea for the show probably about in November of last year. And I launched in April of this year. Mm-hmm. I mean, I was fighting personal demons in myself to say, hey, can I really be a person of influence and do this type of show? Because mm-hmm. trust me, I'm no professional network marketer, no professional entrepreneur. I'm just a guy who's trying to make it just like everybody else. But right. at least I can do more than I, I realize. And I use this analogy all the time now, is that in school, I actually was paid to be a tutor mm-hmm. in algebra. So the analogy is that I'm not the teacher. I'm actually in class with a lot of my classmates. Yeah. But I know just a little bit more, and I understand just a little bit better, mm-hmm. that they came to me and I was paid to do it. Yeah. So that's a, you don't have to be a teacher to get value. There's a lot of people that probably are tutors, essentially, in uh, just being affiliate marketing, Mm -hmm. blogging, writing, videography, something you know just a little bit of, but you know more than your average person, and you can be of value to them. And don't be afraid to share it. One of your common phrases that you say all the time is that when one teaches, two learns. Like, you can learn a lot. Yeah, I'm going to steal it now. Ha, listen. (laughs) Um, Yeah, like, you can learn so much more by actually being a person that's actually trying to lead someone in a direction than you would ever realize. Yeah, absolutely. And um, yeah, I mean, I, I still love that when one teaches to learn and it's, you know, cause it's powerful cause people think, you know, like an interview show that you do and an interview show that I do, which, you know, it's, they think, Oh, I have to do that. Now. I mean, you know, I was afraid to get on camera when I got started and um, you know, I same place as you and right. you really just have to know that much more about the person and about the topic. And if you just ask good questions, then you you bring that out and it provides value to people which grows their business and and they're thankful for it so it's um i don't know it, it, it even even now and I, I i i guess i the question is if you feel the same way is it even now you know like still astonished by the fact that you know this exists and that i was involved with making it and that it helps people even though you, you know that was the goal in the first place yeah it's so weird i was just telling you we, we talked beforehand it's like to me, it amazes me. Like, I am literally grateful and honored when someone joins my email list because it's my email list, with my value. And you said, hey, I mean, that's, that's one of the few things that people have. That's a scarcity now. It's someone's attention. Mm-hmm. So you decide that out of all the things going on that's on this earth, you actually want to listen to content from me. And I, I mean, I get one subscriber and I just get excited and I jump out of my pants. I don't know why. It just, <laughs> it just amazes me that people actually are finding what I do. Yeah valuable and and i like you said that was the goal and that's what i'm focusing on mm-hmm. but it's still i'm just so grateful that people still want to take advantage of of my services through that through that podcast and through that show yeah that's powerful so all right so for for a call to action for someone who is listening and and you know hearing it and logically they're saying okay that makes sense but emotionally they they don't think that they can do it and they don't think that they're the right fit what would you suggest to them that they could do 
in the next 48 hours that would take them a step closer? Okay, one, wake up 30 minutes earlier, step number one. Two, try to exercise at least for 10 to 15 minutes every single day. Because mm-hmm. Tony Robbins says it, it's like physiologically that does something to you. It releases endorphins in your body and just the act of breaking through. Because if you push yourself physically, it comes mentally. Like I said, how you do anything is how you do everything. Uh, reach out to people you haven't talked to in a while just to say hello. And grab a great book. It's called Just Start, Punch Fear in the Face by John Acuff, which is a great book. And I think that should help a lot of people. That's awesome. Thank you so much for coming on and sharing that. And I'm going to have uh, your links to your interview show, your blog, um, social media, our podcast, all the books that you mentioned, and a bunch of tweetable takeaways right below. Um, but we look forward to having more from you on Catalyst. And uh, yeah, thank you. Thanks, man. I really, uh, Brian, again, I just have to let you know, I love what you're doing. So keep it up. Yeah, we're going to be, we're going to be, we're going to be allies. We're going to be in touch here. We're, we're united now. Look, we're happy. <laughs> the energy, energy's good. The energy's good. Love it. <laughs> <laughs>